that's not good. So if you're watching the last video, I'm sure you will see that I was having issues with the car stalling on me. So this happens after the car warms up. I hope it's a throttle body reset, so I am going to perform that right now. Okay, so I just performed the idle relearn. Let's see what happens. So that was not the issue, but shout out to Motordyne G35. I'll put a link in the description of how to do the idle relearn uh, based off his video. Uh, so definitely check out his channel. He has a lot of good information. But it looks like I have something else to do because um, my idle will not stay at 650 like it should. Now again, this is what happens when I try to start the car. So this time it caught, but the RPMs dropped really low. And um, this happens while you drive too, well, while I drive. As I drive, uh, let's say I'm in second gear, I'm coming up to a stop and I put, a, put the clutch in. The idle will drop so low that it stalls the car. So before I even come to a stop, the engine stops. Um, I'm thinking it could be a dirty mass airflow sensor or a dirty throttle body. So I'm going to tackle those two things right now. Uh, chances are I'll have to do the idle relearn again, the throttle body relearn. So I'm going to perform those three things and see what happens. Looking at the sensor, it doesn't seem to be dirty at all, so I do not think this is the issue. And the throttle body, it has a little bit of dirt, but not a whole lot on the outside. I'm going to take it off and clean it from the inside. Alright, so I got the throttle body off. Uh, it's pretty simple. After you remove this clip right here, from right there, you have four bolts around the throttle body. Uh, just using a regular... Allen wrench, um, this one here is a 5 millimeter, and using this combination, not this combination, this combination of a, what is it, 7 millimeter, let me get this to focus, well it's a 7 millimeter deep socket, I would put it into there so that I can get leverage to break these loose. Uh, they were on there pretty tight. Um, if you try using this by itself, you might not have enough strength because the way this goes on there, you're going to have to use this end to place into the bolt and then break it loose with this inch of leverage that you have. By adding this, you're going to get a lot more leverage and you're going to get these bolts off. They're all the same, so you don't have to worry about marking them. Looking at the throttle body, there is quite a bit of dirt back there, so this should definitely improve something. Now it's time to clean it out. 
After using some carburetor cleaner, I was able to get it pretty clean. This is how much buildup was inside of it, including the throttle body or the intake plenum. I didn't do a really good job cleaning out the stuff that's inside there. My thing is I just want to get this car running. I um, did take a SOS pad, Let's see if I can find it. Probably left it in the engine. That's great. Oh, here it is. I took one of these red SOS pads and um, just cleaned off the buildup that was around here. So it has a nice clean surface for when I put the throttle body back on. I am gonna apply a little bit of silicone gasket maker on this gasket that already exists just so it seals up properly. And hopefully this eliminates my idle condition. I'm going to, oh, when I was cleaning this, I did move the throttle body itself. A lot of people do not recommend moving it, but since I'm gonna to have to do an idle relearn anyways, I want to make it as easy as possible to clean this thing. I'm going to put it back on now and see what happens. Everything's back together now. Throttle body's back on. Intake tube. Now, some common questions that you guys might have is, um, is there a leak in my intake pipe? Um, there was one here that I took care of before making this video. Aside from that, I checked it again. There are no leaks between the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. Another question may be, did I disconnect the battery? And the answer is no. Reason being is I forgot. What I'm going to do now is get in the car and start it. I have not done the throttle body relearn process yet. I'm just going to start it and see what happens. So let's get inside. First startup since cleaning everything. And uh, the idle is really high. Now the car is not warmed up yet. Uh, usually when I have the issue, it's when the car is fully warmed up. The idle will go down to um, 650, but when I rev it up, it drops down to pretty much uh, where it stalls. At the moment, it seems um, pretty good. The idle is starting to drop down a little bit. Let's see what happens when it warms up. The car has been idling now for about 10 minutes and um, temperature does not go past 183. As far as the idle, idle is uh, doing really well. Even if I rev it, it doesn't seem to fall far below the 700 mark. Now again, this is without having done a throttle body reset after touching the throttle body. And um, as everybody says, if you move the butterfly valve inside of there, it causes it to mess up. It causes the idle to be extremely high or very low. I have driven this thing for about 10 minutes now and uh, temperature is around 200 degrees. Um, as I'm driving, I'm not having the same issue that I was having before cleaning the throttle body. Uh, RPMs would drop down far below what it is right now, pretty much causing the car to stall. And every single time I come to a stop and I put the clutch in, this is how far the RPMs drop. It's right around 650, 675 uh, RPMs. So I believe the issue has been resolved by just cleaning the throttle body. Um, again, I have not done a throttle body reset or anything of that kind. Um, I didn't even disconnect the battery. so. If you're having the same issue where your RPMs are dropping down, your car is about to stall, try cleaning out your throttle body. It seems to have remedied this problem, so I highly recommend doing that. Um, in this video, I haven't gone over why my car makes the noise that it has, or that it does. So uh, real quick, if you haven't checked out my first video, it tells you a little bit more information about this car. The car does not have rod knock, it is a valve clearance issue. so. I'm going to drive this engine pretty much until it blows. Once it blows, I'll replace it with another engine, but until then, I am going to continue driving this thing, having as much fun as I can with it, 
And uh, in the next episode, I am going to take a road trip so that I can break in this clutch.